we're going to do is we can take it down nice and steady, give you some lovely graduation, and anything that you, you don't understand, just let me know. If you're working with uh, a model like this, so if you're working with a, a head, it won't react the same as, as a real person. So when we're working with him, always give yourself a little bit of leeway on where he's knotted on the, on the temple area here. Just leave it a little bit lower than you usually would if this was a real person. Because if you take it too high here, it'll just stick out and you won't be able to do anything with him at all. When we're offering a pomp, a really traditional pomp is, is something that's disconnected on this light weight line here. Then we graduate all the back and sides. You can take into account uh, all hair and growth patterns. But we're not gonna we're not gonna go with that too much today. We're just gonna get some hair off and we're gonna show you some different techniques that you might not have come across before. If we if we were doing this as an advanced level and then taking it and doing it on a real person, then we would take into consideration all the health and safety, the consultation. But with with Samuel, he's one of those guys that doesn't tend to moan, so we're gonna just use some shear over combs. Use different size shears, different types of shears. As you can see, these are six inch, six inch shears. I've got uh, Joel and then Sensai. Sensai I usually use for shear over comb and then my Joels I use on the top. So to start off, and what we're working with is we're working with a method. It isn't about learning how to cut certain styles, it's how to cut hair. So what we're going to do is use different techniques and different methods today that you might not you generally use. But if you give me, you know, half an hour of your time, hopefully we can introduce you to some different techniques. We're going to be working in overlapping panels. So we always stick to a guide. I would generally work into the mirror. But obviously today for the camera, uh, you know, we, we're going to move Samuel instead of myself moving around the chair. So I'm always working at 90 degrees, and we're going to work, so if you imagine his natural hairline, which you see here, just above his ear, we're working two fingers width all the way around, parallel to the natural hairline. So it's about a comb's width, or two fingers width all the way around. So we're going to start some shear over comb, and I always work from the top down. So I put my guide in, and then we work down. Some of you guys, I know you'll be screaming at the screen and say, oh, no, no, I, don't. I always work from the bottom up. But when you've got somebody with this length of hair, he might have come in from lockdown or he might even just a guy who doesn't have a haircut on a regular. Um, or he might even have to be changing it up. He might be wearing it longer and then coming in short. But this technique, you're in total control all the time. And it's very, very easy to reduce the length. So taking the first section... There's my guide straight away. Comb it down. Next section. So can you see that? Okie dokie. Just having direction off our cameraman. Camera woman, should I say. So can you see how we're taking the length down? And we work this into the beard as well. So because we're going to trim the beard at the same time as well. And I know when you get these mannequin heads, and they're a really good tool for your apprentices or if you want staff training, change change things up. We're just taking this straight into the beard area there. Keeping the hair damp all the time. Not, not soaking wet, but we're keeping it damp. So, as I said, we're using overlapping panels. There's our first panel. Now we're going to go to the second. So we go to what we just cut, which is there, and what we're going to cut. Comb it down. What we just cut, what we're going to cut. So every time, can you see how, how easy and how great technique it is for producing graduation? Look how much we've taken off there. So again, because we're working two fingers or comb width all the way around, 
what we're doing is, is working on a diagonal. Now we're following the hairline. So if, as if we fit, so we can put this in as well. Put our baseline in. Okay. Put a baseline in here as well. And then we carry on with our shear over cone. Control of what we're taking off all the time. So remember, two fingers all the way round. So there. Hi, just while you're all watching, we've actually just muted your mics because there's been a bit of issues with the audio. So if you have any questions, um, you can unmute your mics yourself. So and and you can ask your question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. If anybody's got any questions, anybody doesn't understand what we're doing, just let us know. Love to know how you're all coping with lockdown. I know some states have gone back. I know we've got some friends in Georgia and different places. So just let us know how you're coping and what you're expecting when you go back or when you're expecting to go back. We still have no idea in the UK when we're going to go back. We've been there. We're into our seventh week of lockdown. And we're uh, not crawling the walls, I, I should say, too much. The weather's good, so that's not too bad. But, you know, we're, we're all itching to get back to work. And, you know, it's a worrying time for some businesses as well. So, you know, if anybody's got any ideas of what, how you're passing the time, just let us know. Just go on to the products as well. So... I know we've, we've launched uh, around the country and we've been to quite a few 18.8s. Went in through into California last June, I think it was. Um, we've been, been into Barrington, and, you know, we've been into uh, Chicago. We've been into a lot, of, a lot of places. But, you know, if you've got any questions about the product, I know some of you are, are, are really um, into your products and you, you've, you've actually felt and, and used the products. Um, I'm sure they're coming to, depending on your franchisee, they'll be coming to you soon, hopefully. So if it's something you're interested in, just let us know and we can give you any information you want to. So as you can see, we're, we're coming all the way around. I was working from the left to the right. Some people will actually say to me, you know, I always start at the back and then I go from, from the back into the right, into the left. That's fine. But if you start on one side and keep your guide all the way around, it should stay the same all the way around the head, shouldn't it? So it's just working a bit smarter rather than harder. And we're not just we're not into just buzzing all the hair off at the moment. We have noticed before lockdown everything was getting a little bit longer. We're still doing a you know a fair amount of fades depending on what you what your clientele is, you know, whether you're in a conservative area, businessman, you know, city centre, wherever you are. But we have a really good cross section. We've got six locations. We're based in the middle and northwest of the country. So um, the six locations that we that we run, we found that hair was definitely getting a little bit longer. Not so many skin fades. Still a lot, but you know the. the the trend is definitely finished, you know, changing. So we're working from the temple down into the beard again now. Can you see how we've got this lovely graduation going on? And the thing that we, that's, that's apparent to when we do this, when we use this technique as well, is we don't get this really heavy, thick weight line up here. Because we're using scissor, uh, shear over comb and we're blending in, as you can see, you can see the 45 degree angle that we're, that we're producing. It's all neckline in. I know quite a lot of you uh, do a lot of square necks. We try and get away from the square neck and keep it a natural hairline shape if we can. 
purposely so it looks better when it's growing back for the client because as soon as you put an unnatural hairline shape in it, you don't keep it natural. As soon as you start get growing hair outside the natural hairline, the haircut looks old, it looks as if it's been growing out. Whereas if we keep it tapered and then have a, a blended or a tapered hairline, then it lasts the client a lot longer and it looks a lot more natural. It grows back a lot more natural as well. Okay, so you can see we take them back in size down, reduce the bulk. We can we can actually we we if you like we've roughed the, the shape in. We can now take this through around the ear. Now we'd be bending the ear down, wouldn't we, if we were doing it on a, on a real client? Taking it through. I always tend to hold on to my scissors as well, you know, just guide it with my finger when I'm going around the ear. Just makes it easier to control. Okay, so we can see we're, we're taking that in now, blending it in, looks looking pretty good. Going to go to some clipper over comb now as well. So as you can see with Samuel, you got that there, Rich, yeah? So as you can see with Samuel, we've got our shape. If you were looking at this client from the front now, as we would be looking in the mirror, you've got your symmetry, you've got your shape already. So what we're doing, we're taking our clippers, and remember, we only want two fingers, because we're blending this in, we're not kin taking too short, we want a really nice finish, because we're going to dress him as well. So now we're just going to use the, the uh, clipper over comb, and we're just going to deal with this neckline shape here. So again, nice and smooth, starting on, this, on the, on the left-hand side again, as I said earlier. Hope you can all see that from your perspective. Almost when we're working with beards, and you know, we've got a different um, shape here and growth patterns, but when we're working with beards, we're almost putting the shape in rather than trying to section it. What we're doing is, we're treating it as if we're shaping, sculpting the beard. Sometimes we do it freehand, we blend it in, come through nice and thin, but we're gonna keep the beard longer and we're gonna give him a nice shape. So again, perfect graduation going round the ear. A lot of people always say to me, you know, how do you know where or when to start and stop? A great, a great way of, of thinking about this is we use the comb as our guide. If we're not using guards, we can use guards, but the trouble with guards is um, if you're using a guard from this point to this point and then coming straight out, we're, ne we're not getting any graduation at all, are we? So by giving us graduation, it's a more tailored haircut. It looks nicer and it grows back. I don't tend to use guards a great deal unless somebody wants a buzz cut. But from um, Samuel's point of view, we're actually tailoring the haircut to his needs, aren't we? So we're going round the ear, giving him a nice arc, not too short, nice and smooth. And we're using this as our guide. This is what we leave on or take off. So the angle of the comb is really, really important. So we're anchored at the beginning. So when we're very short, we're anchored onto the head. Then we pivot. So the pivot depends on how much or how little we take off. So the greater the angle, less we take off. Shallower the angle, the more we take off. And then eventually, by the time we get to leaving the scalp, so when we stop anchoring the comb, we eventually see how far away from the scalp the comb is. So we're building our graduation, aren't we, all, all the time. So smoothing. You'll see me very rarely go that way with my comb. I always work from the left, going around the head. Because my guide always starts here. So if I put across it back into my guide, I'm putting it shorter, aren't I? So I always work across my comb that way. And that way you will always keep your guide all the way around the head. The only time I do change direction is just in certain areas. It might be this area here, or it might be in the neck area, where you can't get to a certain uh, direction. So if the, 
if the hair direction or the growth direction, growth pattern direction changes, you've always got to be cutting with some sort of resistance. So if the hair's growing that way, sometimes we have to go against it just to get those little bits in. So nice and smooth. And because we're working with the, with the shear and the copper over comb all the way through the haircut, at the same time as doing the baseline, we're blending in at the same time as well. So we're not constantly flicking around the haircut, going from one side to the other. All that we're doing is keeping the client in the same position and generally just flicking it out. So three hand flick there. I don't know what, I know in the past you've been quite prescript when uh, Ange and, and you know from uh, head office uh, dictated what you could use, what you couldn't use. Um, I don't know what tools you're all using at the moment. I'm using the wall um, super taper at the moment, full blade, half blade, so we can taper neckline shapes in cordless now. So that's the way to go. Fantastic, really, really light. I don't work for all this, is just my personal choice. So you can see, can you see now the graduation that we're forming? So it's nice and smooth, looking from the camera angle. You can see we've got that 45 degree and we're just blending in. We're not going too high. If this gent had got an um, unusual head shape or a really prominent occipital bone, something like that, then we don't, we're not cutting into that area yet, are we, with the clipper? If we did, and you take it too high, too quickly, we'll never able to, to hide that, we'll never able to camouflage it. So, got to be really, really fantastic consultation before you start the client. Don't, don't just comb the client's hair through and just have a look. Really get in there and see, look at these growth patterns, where his crown is, if he's got any neck swirls, any, any unusual features, facial features, head features. You know, just because um, skin fades are in tr on trend doesn't mean it suits everybody, does it? So if they've got an odd shaped head or they've got lumps and bumps on this area or an occipital bone that really sticks out, then it doesn't suit them, does it? You know, just because it's on trend doesn't mean everybody can wear it. So as you can see, I'm flicking this out again, all around the edge. And you know, I know that this doesn't actually work like human hair. When we, I don't like to, another thing, I don't like to wear clips too much, use clips too much. So I keep the hair nice and damp and it controls and it goes wherever I want it to be at all times. So we're in control. And you've got to manage your client's expectations, haven't you? There's no point promising your client saying, oh yeah, I can do whatever you want. If they want, you know, a haircut, they bring Brad Pitt's photo in and say, right, I want it like this haircut. Is it the haircut they want or is it the actual whole image? So expect to disappoint sometimes, if you like. You've got to be real with your clients. You've got to manage to be realistic with their expectations of what they can achieve and what they can't. So again, smoothing this down, blending in into the video. At the same time, we're using half, in between half and full blade, just so we take a little bit of the risk out there. Just smoothing the beard. And you're almost shaping the beard. We're not we're not trying to put it, you know, a, a, it's not a secret. It's not something that we, you know, we're keeping a secret. What we're trying to do is we're managing the haircut, but at the same time, it's almost, you're constructing the shape that you want through the beard area at the same time. If he's wearing his hair quite long and he wants a really short beard, or the other way around, he wants a really long beard, hipster look, and a skin fade, we can do that. We've just got to disconnect the beard at the same time, haven't we? So remember this area as well. This is part of the hairline. All this is part of the hairline. So if this was a real person, 
when it didn't stick out so much, we've got to manage this hairline shape as well. Have we got any questions out there, Trevor? Is there anybody out there that's got any questions? Everybody following this okay already? We've just had quite a few more join. Uh, we don't have any questions at the moment, but for those that you can yeah. hear me, you can either ask in your own questions, or if you, if you don't want to do that, you can just type in the text box. Um, actually, I think we have a, a question from Larissa. So go ahead, Larissa. Hi, Larissa. Ah, she's typed it out. So she-, she Yeah, wants sorry. To... Yeah, I just typed it out. <laughs> there you um, go. No, I, yeah, I was just asking where you did the majority of your training. Um, I'm I'm a fourth well, no I'm a third generation barber so I did my training to my father thirty five years ago I think I'm showing my age now uh, his his uncle before him and I've also got a son who actually works with me now as well he's twenty two he's he's come into the barbering trade so he served his apprenticeship to myself and went through our training school but. To answer your question, I was an indentured apprentice, so what that means, if you're not familiar, is your time served. You have to serve your time. I, serve, I signed papers, and my employer signed papers, and we went through an indentured apprenticeship, which was three years. So I know you do Cosmo school or barber school, so when we're actually working, um, we, we do an apprenticeship system, uh, Larissa, where you do a certain amount of time and you get mentored by a member of staff. So um, at the time, uh, there was two guys who, who I, I mentored under. That was my father, which caused its own problems, as you can imagine, sometimes. And then our head stylist as well, he, he took me in, in that way as well. So, oh, super I, cool. Sorry? I said that's super cool. I, I love that. Gary, Thank perhaps you, you can elaborate on... Uh, what your current roles are in education in the UK. Okay, so my, my role at the moment, I'm just going to cut as I'm talking, I'm just going to talk you through the top as well because what we want to do is we're going to take, so it's longer at the front, we're going to have a, a classic pump, so we're going we're gonna to blow dry and we're going to put some product in there, but we're going to keep it quite long and then it's going to gradually get shorter towards the back. So eventually we want it almost like a wedge shape, okay? So you can do this, put your guide in in two different ways. If, if we go around here first, if we go from the back to the front, which a lot of people do, and we'll take the horizontal sections, we would somewhere, wouldn't we, if this was a real person, have a crown. So we could either be on the side here or on the left here, could be in the middle, could be really low down. A client could have two crowns, it could be a double crown. So we've got, we really, really got to be careful. I see this so much all over the world because, you know, I do tend to travel a lot, but people taking the crowns off and taking them too short. We want this lovely shape. So not only do we want looking at from the front, and from the back, you know, we've got this lovely wedge shape. But also we want to look after this profile as well. If we take it too short on the crown area, it looks like he's been hit on the back of the head and he looks like he's got a flat head. So we've got to be really careful. So when we do section off, always, always section off your first section, nice and straight, nice and clean. And you do not section into the crown. So if my crown was here or here or even in the middle, Give yourself another section and really leave that area nice and clear from so we can really blend into this. If you take this area too short, too soon, you've ruined the shape of the haircut. So what we want is this shape that's going to run beautifully from his hairline and we're going to be nice and graduated all the way through. Okay. So as I said before, we could work from the back to the front. And we can take nice, beautiful, clean, thin sections. You see how, how clean and how, sh how thin the section is there? Can you see that, Rachel? Yeah. yeah. So when we're taking the section, you can see where I'm going to put my guide in. Nice and clean. Always only cut to the second knuckle. 
Don't go cutting right into your fingers. This is where everybody cuts themselves, don't they? When we first start. There's our section. There's our, my first section. Perfect. If you want to take that now to the front and take it, you know, this is horizontal. We can now take it vertical. We can cut in, take this section, really nice and clean again. Just trying to keep out of shot. Take another section across your section that you've already taken and it will give us where we where I just so we can take this all the way through to the front then if we want to and that way we can follow it all the way through. I'm just going to run through this because I know you guys have done this before and I'm not going to try and teach you to suck out because we are going to do it real time as well. Uh, try and not talk as much as we can through it. But going back to um, Trevor's question, my role at the moment, I'm a director of a barbershop company, Rogers Barbershops, in the UK. So we, we have around 35 staff. Um, we have six locations. They're all salaried, so nobody works for themselves. They all get a salary. And then also I'm director and owner of RB Training, which is an international barbering uh, academy that takes us all around the world. Not only that, I, t I work also for, uh, I have done for the last few years with Trevor very closely in the team, and we take the BBA brand all over the world. So we've been into India, South Korea, uh, Australia, all over the Middle East all over North America, that's how I got interested in uh, working with you guys. Um, Canada is part of that. All over Europe and the UK, obviously. So we take our education and the product, which you can see some of our product range here, the, what we use. Just going back to the haircut now, we're going to bring it up to that one length. So going back to the section that we started with, bringing it straight up, not taking a great deal off, because remember, we're changing this client's style up, so he's come in, off lockdown, and we're giving him something different. So when we take this on the sides, we're keeping it quite square, and cutting across the fingers all the time, so we keep the, the accuracy. Again, taking the section again, bringing up this side, uh, getting back to the education, so we take the education all over the world. We spent the last two or three years heavily in the United States and in Canada, so we've done all the major shows, met people like you guys, introduced you to the BBA method and the BBA way of working and, and, and product, and it's something that we're really passionate about. So we've done the major shows as well, so we do about five shows a year. New York, we've worked heavily. Uh, I think I did 147 days in, in North America last year, so it's, uh, it's a lot. Um, so looking at the model now, looking at Samuel, we're going to cross-check now. So this means we're going to go from corner to corner, cross-checking the haircut. If we've kept to our guide, this area here should be the longest, and we gradually get shorter towards the back. So when we, when we take these sections, can you see, there's no dips. The reason we take really fine sections on top is if we, over, if we overextend, so if we take the sections too wide on top, has anybody ever noticed that you get this trough and peak? We almost get lines in the hair. So if you take them too wide, you're dragging hair from here, hair from here. There's only the one in the middle that's actually getting the right length. So when we cross-check, we're just cross-checking that we've got everything perfect when, we, when we've gone through our guidelines. And you can see that that looks great. Okay. If you want to take a little bit of this corner off on the way, and just checking your, your graduation, looking at yourself, look at the, how beautiful the, this, this shape is. So it's really graduated. And then we can just take that corner off. 
just a very, very slight angle. Just taking it off. Only being, we don't want to take too much off because I want to keep this and build this shape so it looks really smooth. And just so there's no weight line. Can you see here, my 45 degree angle that's going to my baseline, I've hardly got to take anything off at all because of my graduation that I did with my shear at the film already. So this is where I say about working smarter and not harder because that way then it's saving you time in the long run on your service. I have a few questions coming in, Gary. If we okay. can go through them uh, briefly. So the first one, I think you've answered the type of clipper you're using, which is a wild clipper. Um, yeah. A question from Adrian. How would you taper the hair if the client has rolls below or by the occipital bone? Really good question. Who gives that question? Sorry. Uh, Adrian. Adrian, great oh, question. California. So, California, fantastic. Um, Adrian, if somebody, like I said earlier, if somebody's head shape or face shape didn't match to the haircut that we were dealing with, we've got to try and camouflage that. I've got a, uh, um, a son who's got a really, really heavy occipital bone at the back. It's like a duck egg on the back of his neck, on the back of his head. And, what I, and he loves the skin fade, a really low, tight skin fade with the razor. So I have to skin fade it very, very low and keep it below his occipital line purely because it just shows so much. And we, this is what I say about when we're working with guards, they're not very forgiving. So if you're working with a guard, and we, for instance, say you're using a, a number two or a number three guard, and then all of a sudden you go into the haircut and you take it off and you take it too high straight away. What happens is then it goes over the area that try, we're trying to camouflage your disguise and there's no going back from that area. So what we've got to do is when, we, when you've got somebody who's got, it might be, you know, heavy bone structure down the sides. We've all seen these guys, haven't we? We have lumps down here. You might have rolls here, you know. I do suffer with that myself. You know, I've got a, a, a funny growth pattern at the back. The best way is, is to either leave it a tiny bit longer. If that doesn't suit the client or what style he wants to achieve, then we have to take it very close. But we don't use a guard going over it because if we go over the affected area where we, what we're trying to camouflage, It'll take you too short on the areas that stick out. So what you've got to do, and this is the reason why we use a tailored haircut approach rather than just a guard, jumping in with a guard every time. We have to go in and just gently take it off a little bit at a time. I know this sounds crazy, and I know I shouldn't be telling you guys because, you know, you're professionals, you've been in the job a long time. But when you're working, it's what we leave on the haircut, not what we take off. Just because you take a lot off on this side doesn't mean we have to take, it might be an incompatible um, service from prior. It might have grown back longer or shorter from the last service. They might try to go with themselves. You know, it might be a haircut you've got to put right. Don't take it for granted that you've got to take the exact amount off all over. Make sure you do it on your own merit. You always, always treat every customer, even if he's a regular, as if it's the first time you've cut it, because that way then, you won't make those schoolboy errors. And hopefully, when, when you are a reg, when he is a regular client, you will get to know that fella as well, or you know, wherever, wherever the client is, it's always easier the second time around. But I think we also get a bit lazy sometimes. You know, we don't give the attention to some of our regular customers. You know, you come in, hi Samuel, are you having the same as usual? And you start cutting it before he's even had a chance to finish sometimes. So be careful to get in, getting into that habit. Always ask your client, what do you like about your haircut? What don't you like? Are you having problems with it? And you'll be surprised at what answers they give you sometimes. And you've been cutting there for a long, long time. I hope that's answered your question, Samuel. What great question. And it's not always easy to to camouflage everything that we've come across. If everybody had a perfect head of hair, you wouldn't need any training, would you? We'd just learn one haircut and we, we, off we go. Just before Gary. I answer any more. Yep, we have just, a question. From... Sorry, yeah. continue. Go on, carry on. Yeah, we have a question from Erica from Barrington. 
why do you work left to right instead of right to left? Isn't it harder to cross over your hands? Great question. And again, I've been to Barrington. I hope you're all well there. I uh, hope you're all staying safe. I always start on from left to right because when I'm working into the mirror, when I'm working at work, my tools are always in my left hand drawer. So I always go from, to, from my left hand side. Plus, I always work from the left all the way around the head because I'm right handed. And my flip hand and my comb hand, even when I'm, I'm clipper or sheer over comb, I always start my overlapping sections here. So if I start here and go all the way around the haircut, I'm following my guide all the way around. If I go from that side and come all the way around, if I go that way, I'm always cutting into my guideline all the time, aren't I? So I'd have to cut that way, and I just, I just don't get, I just don't get it at all. I don't. I, I can use both hands, but I much prefer to move over my comb, going from left to right. So it's just personal, but I do, you know, if you do use this technique and you're right-handed, it does work because you're following your guide all the way around. Hope that answered your question. Very good. So, just quickly, we're going to use some, um, you saw me take it from the front. This is Defining Gel. This is what we, I use as my pre-blow dry all the time. Fantastic product. It creates texture. Just pop to look. I don't want to keep messy. So gives you definition as well, lots of hold. You can actually um, use this as a finishing product as well. About you know a quarter size in, in the palm of your hands, rub it in, and then we push it through the hair. Gives us a little bit of structure before we start the blow dry. If you're going to use something like this, and it's great for retailing as well, but if you're going to do a style like this, You've got to give the, the client an idea of how to maintain this as well. It's not a big secret, you know, you don't want to, I know we, you know, we, we all think we're fantastic at our job and nobody else can do it as good as us. But you've got to help the client at the same time. It's all about the aftercare. Retaining a massive part of your business, or should be. So when we're working with the client, what we need to do is help him, you know, the, if I hear it once, I hear it 10 times of every client. It never looks like when I leave the shop or I leave the barber shop. So you've got to try and get them to get into the habit of using um, products. Not only that, and you wouldn't do this usually, we'd, we'd wash our hands, but here's we're on camera and we're uh, with COVID-19, we'd be washing our hands five times a haircut at this rate. So but I always wash, it, wash my hands in the, in the, in the sink. But Samuel isn't a complainer, so we're all right. Um, but what, what, what I find with most clients is, they'll, I'll say, do you dry your hair? Nine times out of ten, no, no, I don't, I don't do that. Well, you should be, because if you want to get a, a finish, a pump, or some, some sort of structure into a haircut, you've got to dry it. It's no use putting product in and just leaving it like this. Some people will get away with it with really good hair. But most won't. So if they haven't got a hair dryer, you can actually, it's not, you know, opportunity to sell them. Then sure there's one in the house, mum, girlfriend, wife, whoever it is. So we've got to give them some ideas and tips on how to dry. I use Demon Brush. Everything's in a drawer, as you can see. Always, always use it with a nozzle. We're doing the, the gent styling. Nine times out of ten, we're just smoothing the hair. What we're after is, is smoothing the cuticle to make our hair cut look great. We might not want any volume in there. We might not want any, you know, any lift. We do in this particular case today because we've turned it into a pump. But when we're working with the client, we've got to dry it off and get that scaffolding, get that actual structure into the hair before we can add our finishing products. And it's really, really important. If you go back to your Cosmo days, and this isn't a classroom, with, you know, we're doing a, a haircut while we're at home. You know, it's, it's, it's something we, we want to, to give to you. But if you go back to your Cosmo days, when you think of your theory, so 
We're breaking the hydrogen bonds, aren't we, with the wet, with the water, the moisture. Hair's hygroscopic. So then we're now fixing the hydrogen bonds into place, and then we're fixing them, fixing them with some, with some uh, finishing products. Alpha to beta carotene, if, we, if you want to go into the science of it as well. But if you know this, you, you're a professional, you know all these terms, and you talk to your clients and you, you talk to them about how they get the desired loop. It comes across as being professional, doesn't it? And that's what we're after. So, medium heat, fast flow. If this is a real client now, we would brush him down, put all the hair off him, perhaps even get the hair off the floor as well. Is that better? So, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to build some structure into the hair cut. I'm going to smooth it, we're smoothing the cuticle so it makes hair look healthy. You won't able to heal me, unfortunately, with the hair dryer on. So what I'm going to do is just pull this into shape. I want a nice, if you, if you like, when we're pushing this in, we're pushing it and then just bringing it forward. So we want to fix it into that shape there perfectly. Okay, so I'll just do one side and then we'll, we'll take some more questions. Okay, so you can see one side's done from that side and then one side that isn't. Can you see the difference in structure? Imagine adding finishing products now to this haircut. For one, it to just flop, look crazy, you know, real finish would be rubbish on it. But two, until this sets, until these hydrogen bonds set and it actually dries out, there's going to be no structure in the haircut whatsoever. Usually, we wouldn't leave it quite as long in this area. I'm going to smooth that in a minute, but that's only because how the hairline reacts on these kind of heads. But if this was a real person, our disconnection would be probably about there. So I'm going to show you this, this finish off the, the drying now.
Okay, so as you can see, we've got our shape, our basic shape now. Can you see how smooth it looks? It goes from front to back, and we smooth through already. If this was a client, it looks pretty good. You know, it didn't finish by any stretch of the imagination, but we just need, and I don't know if you can see that in the actual mirror, we just need to smooth those areas because we'd be constantly looking in the mirror all the time, wouldn't we? To symmetry, balance, making sure it's looking great. So just to smooth these areas very slightly, there's a few different techniques we can use. We can use our texturizing shears, which a lot of you guys might use. We could use our feather razor, which our shaper, which you can use as well. And we can use our normal shears and the clippers. So I'm just going to smooth the edges very slightly. I take this little bit short around here, but with these kind of models, if you take them too short sometimes, they go see-through and you don't get that, that lovely finish. So I'm just going to take, and I always like to dry my clients off before I actually finish detailing the haircut because I think once you've dried it, it just takes that little bit of what we need just to, it's almost fine tuning the haircut, isn't it? You see how we've taken that and smoothed it? We're almost moving the comb at the same time just so we're slicing through the haircut. Smooth it nice and smooth, keeping the, the, the comb off the head. So it's, remember when we were anchored, pivot, and suspend, so we suspended off the head. Hi, we're Gary, we have a few questions when you're ready. Yeah, fire them away, yeah. Okay, we have, a, we have about four questions here, so I'll go through them. There's one from Adrian. Um, Adrian from, Adrian's from California. How would you tackle a crown that has two cowlicks or swirls that go into each other? Okay, good, good question, Adrian. Until you actually see the particular client that we're talking about, it's hard to, to give you one definitive answer. But what I will say is when we're working with, when we're working with a double crown, so if somebody comes in and they've got a double crown, the double crown will always lie flat in one direction or the other. I suffer from a double crown, uh, a couple of the guys who work for us do. So when we're working, you've got to do is comb it over every which way until you find which way it lies best. It will always lie down better one way or the other. What I find so much uh, with, with these guys as well, when, when, you're, when you're working with um, with hard, hard to cut hairs, if you like, with, with awkward um, growth patterns, is you know, if somebody's wearing a party on one side, they're working all the time against the hair. You've got to try and work with the hair with the natural uh, growth patterns. So, if somebody's got a, a party on this side and the crown's on this side, and they're trying to push it over the crown all the time, it's always, always going to stick up. So, make life easy for yourself, move his crown. So it's on, it moves his party, so his crown's on the same side as his party. You can't move the crown, you can only move the party. So taking the, the party over on one side to match the crown will help. It's the same with the double crown. Always comb it in different directions to see where it actually lies best. And you will always find that there's always one or the other. I hope that answers your question, Aidan. Thanks, Gary. We have another one from Larissa from West Constant who has asked uh, if the BBA do also uh, beard product. Yeah, so um, if you go to the link on British, you, this is a good lead into what we've been doing today. If you go on to the BritishFathers.com uh, or there's our website, it'll give you all the information you can. I don't know if you can see the full range there. So this is the, the range that we offer at the moment. Our beard care products, we have skin care uh, and beard care, styling and um, shampoo and conditioner as well. Beard care, we, we use a shave oil. You can use this to, as a leave-in oil. 
Um, it's a, a multi-use product, so you can shave with it. So we can do neck shaves, we can actually shave the face with it. It's hydrator as well, it hydrates the skin, it's a leave-on conditioner. But also it's a beard tamer as well, so it's an oil that can be used to actually on your beard as well. I use it all the time, I shave with it when I'm uh, working away because I don't have to carry my brush with me. And it's really good if, you, if you're doing shape-ups, so if you've got a beard like myself, you're only shaving this area and this area, that's all we need to do. Using an oil, it's great for clients because they can see where they're actually working as well. But it's a great product as well. It's not too heavy. It's got great ingredients. We pride ourselves on the ingredients of these products. Um, it's got hemp seed oil in there, prickly pear seed oil, some of the most expensive on the market. So the really great um, products that complement your skin as well. Hope that one helps you. We have a question from Sarah. Uh, Sarah's from Naperville, Illinois. She just wanted to know which, which hair dryer you used. Oh, right. Okay. Lovely to see you, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hair dryer I'm using at the moment. This is my travel dryer. Uh, we use it, I use it professionally as well. So it's in Italian make. It's Gamma. Uh, it's a Gamma professional. Fantastic dryer, so it's digital, so on and off. You can actually lock it as well. You've got, if you, I don't know if you can see that to camera, but you've got light on how, how hot it is and what, um, uh, how strong you want to use it, and you've got your cold shot as well. So this is really good, it's really, really light, really powerful, and we use uh, similar hair dryers in, in the shop as well, but I bought this for my, uh, my better half, she, she loves the hairdryer. Uh, got it at Salon International last October. Uh, but it, I found it's really great for traveling because it, it closes down to absolutely nothing. You know, it goes in my kit for traveling abroad really, really well. So, fantastic hairdryer. If anybody wants any more information, just can drop us a line. Again, I don't work for these guys. <laughs> it's just something I like to use. I hope that helps you, Sarah. So I have another question, just a quick one from Sophia Anderson. What would you do different if the client wanted more length left on the sides? Exactly the same as, as, as we've done already. Um, what, I, what I will say is, it's, as you can imagine, it's really hard. And hopefully in the future you'll join us again and we'll get to do it on some real clients. Um, obviously with lockdown, we can't, can't get any clients in at the moment. But can you see the shape that we've got? If somebody wants to leave this longer, if they want a longer version of this, we do exactly the same. It's just left a little bit longer, that's all. You can see the disconnection is here. So we've gone from you know, this sort of length here to this length here. So this is a true pump, if you like. So for the, for the guys out there who you know, are, uh, Pompadours are a real sore point with, with a lot of guys, really, because there's the, 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 uh, there's certain people out there that think a pomp should be done in a certain way. It should be completely disconnected, very short around the back, back and sides, and then as long as possible on top. We've got to make it commercial, haven't we? So we've got to make it so the client can wear it as well. So he can wear this really, really straight, really smooth like this. I'm going to add some product in a minute. We can wear it so it's a bit tussled, depending on what product we wear. We can wear it to the side. It's a really versatile haircut. But what you've got to remember is, if he wants it to look this good, he's going to have to work with it, isn't it? It's not a wash and go kind of haircut, is it? We've got to work in it. Work in it. As you can see, we've got the texture. We've got the, the scaffolding or the, the finish, you see? Just, just finishing off and just, just hopefully that, that's helped your question. Using texturizing shears if you want to. I don't really use these very often. If you do, be very, very careful. Because if you're not careful, when you're using texturizing shears, it looks like a small animal has been chewing at the hair, doesn't it, if you're not careful. So when we do use them, very sparingly, and anything, that, just an area, and you're moving all the time. I don't tend to use them a lot because uh, I always thought it was a bit of a cheat a long time ago, but I met a, a father, an old barber, 
named Kenyon Yates, fantastic guy, and he really changed my opinion on, on texturizing shit. But I tend to use my razor more. I know I haven't used the razor on this haircut much at all, but I really, really like the razor. I, if, if I got bulk to remove, I would go across and take the razor through there, that sort of area. If I got a little bit here, I take it through. Obviously on damp hair, you can finish very slightly with dry, but remember you, your client's uh, comfort is paramount. Okay, so we're going to just add some product on here. We're getting about that time. I know we've, we've, we said about four to five minutes and it took a long time for everybody to connect. To connect. We've got all different products here. One of the finishing products we use is molding cream. I like molding cream because if you've got that sort of client that will constantly be putting his hands through his hair, you know, through the day, it's the kind of product that is really, really forgiving. So when we take it, we're showing the client it's a really nourishing product. So it's a light, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't describe it as greasy, but it's a, it's a non-greasy, uh, but it's a cream. It's definitely a cream and it's got flexible holds. So when we work with this, we want about, you know, a cashew nut or a small, a large peanut, something like that. Build it into your palms of your hands. You can see the product placement is there. And what we want to do is we're pushing it through the client's hair. We don't, what, what usually happens with gents is they use too much product and then it just ends up all on the front, doesn't it, there. So what we're after is we're pushing it onto the pads of our fingers here. So you can see the pads, okay? And then we're pushing it so it's getting right down into the root. Or it's not, we're not taking it. You see how it's taking it off the pads of my fingers? We reapply onto the pads. Again, taking it through, taking it through right down onto the root, smoothing the sides into the beard. We can use all these finishing products into the beard as well. You see how it's just taking off the pads of my fingers now? So we work that through, reapply, and then we can palm it onto the onto the back and sides. The main thing is here is just giving the client that enough information to get the look there thereafter. So we can have a quite unkept look if you like. So we can have it really smooth, we can have it combed into place. When we work in, smooth it into your beard. That's what we want. And make sure we take it into the back as well. So when we've worked into the back, not only do we want it on the front, we want it all through into the back. And you can see how we've got this lovely shape now coming into the back. We haven't taken it too high, too short, too high. What we've got is great shape. Put that in the bin. Using a wide tooth comb, a dressing out comb. You can comb this out and even take the product in further. Make sure it's covered all through into the, the haircut. Smooth it all in. So Samuel, thank you, sir. Any more questions out there, Trevor? Just before we can bring start bringing it, wrapping it up. Yes, we have a question from Amy from Elgrove, West Constant. She said, if you wanted a connected haircut with your methods, how would you go about connecting the top and sides? Okay, great question. So if we were going to connect this haircut, we could just take shear over comb or use your razor, whichever way you wanted to do it. And what we do is, is comb that down. You wouldn't keep your perfect shape here if you were going to connect it. But what we do is, is just take it down I know we've, we've styled it into place, but where your connection is, just using shear over comb, and all I'm doing is moving my, my, my shears and my comb at the same time. And what we're doing is, is just taking it up. It's got product on now, so it's just a little bit hard. But when you take that up, 
you see how smooth it, how much smoother it is. If you wanted to use your razor, you could use your razor. So going from this side, we're combing down. So we could take this hair. And remember, you're just nibbling at the ends and take a little bit of time off. Don't go taking too much off. Comb it out in between. And when we're doing this, we need, you need the hair between the comb. You've got to go across the comb because we need that resistance. Because if you don't, it will just push the hair out of the comb and you won't take anything off. But can you see how we're taking off? Gary, that falls into another question from Victoria quite well. Uh, she's asked, could you do the whole cut with a razor, like on a client with very thick hair? Yeah, of course you could. I love razor cutting. So, you know, again, when going back to the, to, to the last question and using your razor, but can you see how we just use taking each, each hair, just taking it a little bit shorter than I've left it before, I can take it down or as, leave it as long or as short as I want to. You can detail the haircut, whatever you want to do. I hope that's uh, answered your question. Gary, Gary just so, sorry, yeah, Gary, just as you're just you're coming into the final stages, um, as as well as being a an education uh, director for the BBA. You know, you're obviously involved in a lot of other education um, positions and, 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 you know, you've been involved in education in the UK. Uh, could you just share a little bit about that and also, you know, what you think is very important with education within uh, shops? Yeah, of course. I mean, our ethos, if you like, from, from a, a point of view is, is... The Barber Council is another role that I take, I've taken on over the years. Everybody always talks to me and says, what was your plan when you started, you know, started off in the industry? My plan to start off in the industry to start, you know, was to be successful. Obviously, that's all we, we all want to do. But to do it as well as, as I possibly could. If I'm going to do something, I'm the type of person who, you know, my guys at work will say I've got OCD. I'm not quite sure if I've got that, but... I really, really want to do it. To, if I'm going to do something, I do it to, uh, to my best of my ability. So I made my plan. And that's how I got into education because I wanted to take control of my staff education. So in 1993, I became a qualified, uh, started teaching, worked towards my qualification as a teacher. So I, I, I became qualified in 1998 as a teacher. So I did my teaching qualification. And then from there, it just it just kind of snowballed on. So I didn't have this plan where we wanted to, you know, to be at this place, standing in front of you guys now. That was never my plan. It was just I got asked to do a lot of things on that journey, on that way. So in 98 to 98 and 99, I got asked by the government to write the national standards, which, great honour, uh, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. I don't know if I'd do it all over again for the heartache you bought me sometimes, but um, it's always a great honour that you, you know your peers want to want you to go into a position like that. We've worked for foreign governments um, all over the world, so we've we've attracted uh, and selling standards qualifications. I've worked for Sitting Girls, BTCT, which is our awarding organisations over in this country. And then, you know, the pinnacle, really, if you like, I was asked to be chairman of the Barber Council, which uh, represents the industry, the barber in, barbering industry in Westminster in, in, in government as well, um, which took me on a long journey as well. It, you know, a lot of sleepless nights, really, especially when we have things like this that are affecting the industry at the moment with COVID-19. It's, it's a very, very hard time, and everybody looks to you to give you the questions and all well, morally the answers really um but it's been a pleasure to do go on that journey it's been a bit of a roller coaster there's been a lot of things in between as well you know we work for different organizations uh, such as yourselves 188 they they've asked they can't be asked us to come in and help you guys introduce you to the, the the british way of doing things if you like 
uh, and we're in, we've done it all over the world. So it's been a pleasure today working with you guys. Um, hope you're going to join us again. We have got loads of exciting things going on, competitions. Just get on the website, have a look what we're all about. Um, and with a bit of luck, you know, we'll, we'll meet up in the future when everything, all this madness is gone, gone and we're all back to normal. So thank you very much. There's Samuel, there's our haircut for today. We, we haven't managed to get into the beard because we talked a little bit too, a bit more than we've done, but we have smoothed him into the size there. So we have gave you the, the transition into the beard. But what we, what we need to just emphasize is, is it's all about the technique. I said again, you know, I'll say it again. It's not about just cutting certain styles. It's about learning how to cut hair techniques and methods. If we were going to do this with, you know, with a client, which I hope we'll get to do for you, and um, show you the, the areas that can go wrong. And, you know, if, if, I, if we, we want perfection, I know nobody, nobody is very hard to do but as good as you possibly can. Everything that you do, every bit of work that you push out of that door is a reflection on you, isn't it? So, you know, this is your hair. It doesn't matter who cut it before, this is your haircut, this is your work. So, everybody's finished, there's no more questions. Hope to see you all again. Is that all, all done from your end, Trevor? Yep, thank you very much, Gary. Fantastic, everybody stay safe. Hope to see you in the future and hope to have a pint with you at some point or other and uh, back in the US. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Day. Okay.